What the fuck is up? This is the Constant State of Annoyance podcast, and I am your host, George Blaha. And the reason why I do this podcast is because I'm a wannabe stand-up comic. All my material's in English. And the reason why I specify that all my material's in English is because I live in a Spanish-speaking island. Puerto Rico. I mean, it could be worse, but yeah, Puerto Rico. And, you know, when you do comedy in a, you know, in the, in the second language of an island, it's, you know, it's always... Eh. <laughs> it's always eh. And it's not like I have no other option. It's just that English English is my second language. That's the thing. Like, why don't I just do it in Spanish? Because I'm set in my ways. And that's how I want to do it, man. Okay? Why don't you fucking tell the guy that wanted to paint bowls of fruits, different combinations of fruits. You know what? Today I'm going to I'm gonna paint a bowl of bananas, and cantaloupe, you know, and you paint that, and, but all your friends and family's like, dude, just fucking paint, paint boobs, man, that's what's in, the fuck are you painting fruit for, huh, is that your way of expressing that suppressed feeling you have inside of you that maybe you're a little fruity, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, my point is that I'm not really smart, and that I should adapt and do comedy in the language, you know, of the first language of wherever I'm performing. <laughs> but it, it hasn't been that bad, to be honest, dude. It could have been much more worse, dude. I've done pretty good. What I mean pretty good is, you know, I've, I killed maybe once. <laughs> Truly killed once and done all right a lot of times to, you know, keep on doing what I've been doing, dude. Really, honestly. Like, it could honestly be worse. I, I, I didn't expect to do two minutes on this subject. I apologize. Anyways, I want to talk to you guys about ass cracks. Because I've been seeing a lot of it. Especially one... I was going to say one pair of ass crack. But an ass crack is between a pair of ass cheeks. I've been seeing one ass crack. For way too much, man. It's a co-worker's ass crack. And I'm fucking exhausted of seeing it, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Like, every time I see it, the urge to pour hot coffee and fucking hot sauce down this dude's ass crack grows every time I see it, man. Every time. It's it's exhausting, dude. This guy's new. And of the, like, seven days I've worked with him, I've seen his ass crack five days out of those seven fucking days, dude. It's fucking, it's driving me insane. Just, dude, buy a belt. Okay, by a belt. I, I could I could forgive one day, man. One day of like, dude, it was the first day at work. I was nervous. I, I had the worst luck in the world. The alarm clock didn't go off. I freaked the fuck out. I left my house and I forgot my belt. I bought my pants a couple sizes bigger than what I regularly do. Christmas was coming and I didn't want to buy fit fit pants. You know what? Whatever. I could understand that. I could understand once. I could understand seeing your ass crack once because you forgot your belt. But the thing is, the thing is, it's not like, it's not like I'm seeing like an inch or two of ass crack, you know, just like above an underwear waistband. That's not the situation here, guys. That isn't the fucking situation. I wish it was. Oh, I wish it was, man. No, I'm seeing fucking five inches of ass crack, man. Five out of seven days, dude. Five to six inches of ass crack. No underwear to be seen. I don't even know. Do you, is he wearing underwear, man? Or is he just free-balling at work? Are you fucking free-balling, dude? I don't know if free-balling is gross or not. Because I find it hot when women tell me, Oh, I'm not wearing any underwear. Especially if they're wearing skirts, I guess. That's hot, so it's like, whatever, man. It's hot when women free-lip. I could never free ball, to be honest, man. And I think it's because I'm circumcised. For sure, dude. Like, people who are uncircumcised have that, like, little layer of protection. Well, depending on the size of their, of their member, of their genitals, it's a little layer or a big layer. But, but I'm circumcised, so I can't free ball. Because I don't enjoy it when my dick looks like someone who just suffered a motorcycle accident. Honestly, I like wearing boxer briefs 
So I like it all like mushed up, which really defeats the purpose of having like hanging genitals. And by, by mushing my genitals together, I basically have a vagina, man. Honestly. <laughs> I basically have a vagina. But anyways, dude, five out of seven days is fucking insane, dude. And, and the thing is that he works in the garden. You know, he works in gardening. So he's always like bent over. And it's just, oh man. Like, do you not feel like a little breeze? Do you not feel like we live in a tropical island? Like, don't you feel the burn or something? It makes me laugh because this guy, he works outside gardening. And most of us, I like to say that most of us have not gone to a nude beach, right? That's fair to say. Most of us have pale asses. And this guy only has half of a pale ass. It's fucking hilarious to me, man. It's just fuck. Like, I just don't understand it, dude. I don't. Why are you always showing your crack? Huh? Why is your crack always out? Are you a crack dealer? Is that how crack dealers make it known to addicts that, that they sell crack? Is that? That's such a dumb joke. <laughs> Fuck me, man. Is that it? Like, for fuck's sakes, I'm tired. I'm tired. And then the thing is that it's it's not like hair. It, it's presentable. It's a presentable ass crack. And like the half of the ass cheek around it, what, what I could see, it's actually presentable. Is he peacocking? Are you fucking peacocking? Like maybe in this guy's mind, right? If women can show their cleavage, why can't I show my ass crack? As sex appeal, using my ass crack to add sex appeal to my appearance. Why can't I do that? Maybe that's this guy's logic. I guess you could try it, I guess. But, like, to me, at least to me, because, again, sexuality is a really personal thing. At least to me, like, a cleavage and an ass crack, while they're technically, like, I guess I could see your point that they're technically kind of the same thing, Right? But the burping and farting are technically the same thing, right? You're releasing gas through one of the two principal orifices. But the thing is that a burp is much cuter than a fart. A thousand times, man. <laughs> a thousand times. Cleavage is much cuter than ass crack. A thousand times. Ass crack is just trashy. In a way, I guess, from my point of view. Maybe some people like it. Hell, man. Good for you, dude. But I, I just, I, 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 I can't, I can't stand it, dude. I'm telling you. And he's always bent down gardening, man. Just freeballing it, I guess. Or maybe he, he's wearing, because the guy weights maybe, I'd say around 180 to 200. Like he's, he's fattish, but he doesn't look that fat. He's more like on the chubby side when it comes to appearance. Maybe he has hand-me-down underwear from his 300-pound brother. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's his situation, man. But, I, dude. No, and I remember one day he came with his shirt tucked in. His shirt tucked in. The shirt was, you know, there was a lot of tension between, like, the, the waist of the pants when he was bending over and it was like pressing against his ass because his pants were hanging low and you could basically see his ass crack through his shirt but it was grosser because you could see like a big sweat stain man it was like oh dude come on you're working you can afford a belt i'm telling you if this keeps on and I keep working in the same place until Christmas. I'm buying this motherfucker a belt, dude. It's fucking insane. This has to stop, man. This And it's like, it's it's just there. It's not like I'm looking for it. You know, one second I turn my head. Oh, like, like on my right, someone's there. I heard a sound and I know it was made by a human. And you look and bam, ass crack. You've been cracked, George. You've been cracked. And I'm like, ah. It's way too early for this. <laughs> he gets in work earlier than me. It's fucking insane, man. And five inches of ass. Really, it's not like two. I wouldn't complain if it was two inches. Just a little bit. A little bit. And below it, some underwear. Fine. Fine. 
for all I know, for all I know, really, maybe, just maybe, he just, since he works outside, you know, the sun's hitting him, he's all sweaty, you know, he's probably, maybe he doesn't enjoy gardening, maybe he's doing a job he hates, I know I'm doing a job I hate, so I'm going to try to sympathize with this guy, for all I know, man, for all I fucking know, this guy eats a McDonald's breakfast, and, you know, he works outside basically alone. Sometimes he has a he has a partner, but mostly he works alone. So for all I know, it's like past the time to like at least have some fun while he's working. Maybe he just like hangs his pants a little low, eats a greasy breakfast, and just he just farts, man. And he just doesn't want his farts muffled because I'm yeah. Unmuffled farts are funnier, man. <laughs> Maybe he's that easily entertained and good for him, dude. Maybe I should not judge him that hard. You know? We're all just trying to do the best we can in life, right? I mean, clearly. Clearly. I'm trying to do the best I can in this podcast and I'm failing. This guy's trying to do the best he can at his work and it's annoying. But I guess we're all just trying to do the best we can. Is this really how I'm going to conclude this? Just me sympathizing for a guy that just just needs to buy a belt? Fuck him, man. <laughs> Fuck. That always happens to me, man. I always get worked up on a subject. I get worked up on something. And and I get worked up and passionate and I'm pissed off. And always at the end, I'm like, you know, we're all trying to do the best we can, dude. We're all human. We're all just different things entertain us okay i live in puerto rico and there's only one open mic dude every two weeks i'm miserable this is why i do this weekly man it's more of a comedy exercise than hey come and listen to my podcast if you want to listen good and if you want to give me give me pointers great if you want to tell me it sucks tell me where it sucks so i could do better and if you want to tell me dude this was entertaining thank you right like, this is me doing the best I can inside the circumstances I'm living in. So, maybe this guy, you know, hanging his pants halfway so he could fart, unmuffled farts, is the best way that this guy could cope working a shitty job that involves gardening and landscaping. I really didn't. This this wasn't in my notes, by the way. I didn't expect this to turn this way. I, I really wanted to hate on this guy. But, you know, when you put into perspective, you're like, fuck, man. Just, god damn it, fuck. And if I think about it even more, you know, personally, I'm a person who runs away from their problems. Like, I postpone solving my problems. Like, for example, the remote of my TV, of my television... After serving me for a long time, it finally broke. It stopped working. And I put off buying a fucking universal remote for my television for so long, man. And then my mom finally decided to buy one. And it just, dude, it just sat there just staring at me like, hey, are you going to program me? What, What's the deal, dude? And I just postponed doing it, man. Because... I'm a person who gets, I get used to inconvenience really fast, man. Like, if something inconveniences me, like, if something gets in my way, like, I'll find an alternate route, even though it's not convenient, and then I'll get used to that inconvenience instead of just making life easier for myself. I don't know why I'm like that. I'm trying to change that about myself. If I, if I think about that... And I apply that to the situation of this dude. Like maybe he's like, dude, I'm going to buy a belt. And he was just like putting that on the back burner. Just not doing it, man. Postponing, just going to the mall and buying a belt. And then one day he went to the mall. Oh, fuck, I forgot to buy a belt. He just kept on postponing it. You know, he just got used to feeling that breeze on his ass crack all the time. And he got used to everybody just like looking at it. He's like, whatever, man. I mean... If you're showing your crack, dude, 
Obviously, you have to feel the stairs, man. I mean, there's no way he's not aware of it. You gotta feel the stairs. And maybe he just got used to the inconvenience. God damn it. I should just... Oh. <laughs> Anyways. Fuck, man. Maybe in the future, ass cracks are going to be the new cleavage, man. Maybe that's gonna be fashion. And maybe some of you are going, Ah, that's not gonna... There's no way that's gonna happen. Dude. Think about it. Do you choose what's good looking or does the fashion industry choose what's good looking, man? I'm fucking telling you, man. That's always like, because back in the day, like back in the late 90s, baggy pants were in, man. That shit was in, okay? Everybody wore these like really baggy clothes. It was like if in the United States... There was this infestation of bears just everywhere you went. And there were like just bears everywhere attacking people. And it's like if everybody had to wear baggy clothes to like make themselves look bigger to like scare away the bears. Like that was fashion back then. That was fashion back in the late 90s. That's how it was, man. Try to pull off that look today, dude. Everybody's gonna make fun of you. Hell, I'm gonna make fun of you. People are going to call you Flying Squirrel. People are going to say, hey, dude, I didn't know that you kept the clothes after you went parachuting. Or whatever cheesy, hacky joke they're going to tell you. But really, man, I, I really believe that the industry decides what's fashionable and what's not, man. And it changes. And I really wonder what's going to be, like, in style. What's going to be the fashion in here in 50 years? Like... Is it going to like rotate back to like baggy clothes or is it going to be something completely new, man? Do you think? Like, do you think that sandals and long white socks are going to make a comeback? I don't think it, it was ever a thing, but I'm telling you, if enough celebrities wore sandals with long white socks, all of us idiots would be wearing that shit and it would become the norm, man. I'm fucking telling you, it would become the norm. If enough celebrities went out in public, let's say, dude, if like a, a hundred celebrities of the biggest celebrities one day, you know what? No, for like a, a whole six months decided to just like go out in public with pit stains, man, with like big, juicy yellow pancakes, dude, just ginormous pit stains. I'm telling you, we would all stop. Dude, they would kill the deodorant industry. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? I'm just gonna roll with it. They would kill the deodorant industry. I'm telling you, man. Do you think that... I don't know. Because I know that celebrities could affect fashion. But how about, like, affecting personal hygiene? Like, not like they're gonna stop showering and they're gonna smell. But I mean, like, personal hygiene that you could, like, physically see. Like, like what if they all just stopped brushing their teeth? And cavities became cool, man. Cavities became fucking cool. <laughs> Dude, dentists would be fucked. But I really wonder, like, is there going to be, like, a new, like, a new trend? Like, something that's never been done before? Like, eyelid rings? I'm not sure if that's a thing, but could you imagine eyelid rings being cool? I mean, nose rings were cool. The septum ring was in fashion and I remember everybody at first saying dude women these days look like fucking bulls with like that ring in the middle Is that was that the septum I don't remember I'm probably but you know the nose ring in between the nostrils the ring and the like nostril cleavage and the nostril crack or the nostril bridge the nose bridge no the nose bridge is what it's what's on top of the no I, I don't I'm semantics. Anyways. But yeah, man, like is there gonna be anything new? Or maybe fedoras are gonna make a comeback. Who the fuck knows, man? Who the fuck knows? Maybe dude, could you imagine if in the future the fashion is sandals with high white socks, pit stains, eyelet rings, fedoras, and and googly eyes somehow just come in dude and everyone's wearing everyone's shaving 
their eyebrows, right? And instead of, like, tattooing that eyebrow area or, like, painting it, they just glue googly eyes around that, like, eyebrow line. That would be fucking insane, man. Life would be a trip. Maybe if they legalized shrooms and acid and other psychedelics, hell, man. Maybe that would become a thing. Who knows, dude? Who knows? That'd be so fucking cool. Anyways, so I have a segment on this podcast where I say an inspirational quote. I really enjoy inspirational quotes. They really help me get, you know, through my week. And the inspirational quote of the week is, Keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. Theodore Roosevelt. And this is a really beautiful quote. But I like to add something to this quote. Keep your eyes on the stars and your feet on the ground. And just cross the street. Just cross the street a couple of times and see what happens. Anyways, <laughs> that's the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Really, I really appreciate anybody who's listening to this for some reason. Thank you very much, man. Peace the fuck out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Really, I really appreciate anybody who's listening to this for some reason. Thank you very much, man. Peace the fuck out, guys. <laughs>